Hey, what's going on guys? Matt back here with another tutorial and today we're going to be looking at zombie AI. So last time we had the buildings, we've also had the human AI and now we're going to have the zombie AI. So I've got a zombie target in here. If I just hit play, you can check out what he's doing. So he just walked into that human, he's killed him, made a little blood splat on the floor and he's going to randomly walk. He's not that smart, so he's just walking across the road, not too safely. Might get hit. He didn't quite get hit, but he's still this, this other zombie's killing other ones. They're all going around chasing humans, walking randomly, and just causing causing mayhem. So they can walk into buildings, they can add themselves to the buildings, they can remove themselves from the buildings, and they can chase after each other and get hit. They kind of they have kind of a swarm nature to them because they all try and go after the same humans. So over time you see them kind of clump together and attack things all in one go. So all I've got in the scene at the moment is just a zombie target and that will be placed by you later on in the next tutorial once I've put in the GUI and the some of the menu -y kind of stuff. So our prefabs are the more important part. We've got a blood splat prefab which I've created just a little texture in Photoshop. It was just very quickly thrown together. So that's just literally got a mesh collider and it's just got a material attached to it which I have added here which is just a material with a texture that I've dragged in and I've literally just dragged the, dragged the texture in create material and then you drag it onto here to create your texture and I've just made it a transparent diffuse just because I've got some transparent edges and I don't want there to be white corners on the image there so that's how you do that and then uh, other than that we've got our zombie which is pretty similar to the human actually it's just got the zombie movement script instead of the human movement script and the same with the zombie target actually that's exactly the same it's got a mesh render, mesh render. it's got the zombie target movement instead of the human target movement and I'll go through those scripts in a second other than that we've also added some scripts to the building setup one so I'll open that one up as well and we can take a look so the zombie movement has a two follower move speed a rot speed distance from target and it's got the blood splat that we've got there which is the object that's going to have the blood splat on it that it's creating on the floor that's the only difference from the human movement script that we've got and then inside the update function we've got if two follow isn't equal to null so if we've got a two follow object then we've got the position and the rotation so this is just following off two follow objects again just like the way that the humans do and it's exactly the same way that the cars do as well you just set your own speeds and stuff up there and then we've got on collision enter with human so if we bump into an actual human not their target as long as we have a two follow and the other one has a two follow then we're going to hit them and we're going to kill them so we create a blood splat on the floor at the vector three which is the human that we hit into their position x the position y of the blood splat to make sure that it's on the right plane this will only work if you haven't got any hills in your scene if you've got any kind of hills or slopes or anything then it won't be at the right angle you'll have to rotate it as well we also create the other objects Z. So we just go their Z, their X, and then we make sure that the Y is on the position of the blood splat. And that's at the other one's transform rotation. So to make sure that the, the blood splats are random all around, it's going to be matching the rotation of the human that we hit into. And then we've got, uh, we create a two follow, which is actually the zombie target movement object. We create that object at the other object's position. So basically we make a new zombie because that's what that's effectively going to do. And then we destroy the human's uh, two follow object and we destroy the, the human's object itself and then stop ourselves from having a target because we because we, our target movement has a target which it follows because it follows all the humans. So that's how that works. And we also have, if we hit into a car, we do exactly the same thing that the humans do except we also create a blood splat because I've added that in now. So we change ourselves to red. We also add a little bit of force I've added. So we do exactly the same apart from we go head rigid body add force vector three zero one hundred zero. And again here transform rigid body add force vector three zero one hundred zero. And that just makes them kind of pop up a bit when you get hit with the car. And it looks a little bit funnier and it adds to the uh, atmosphere of the game. Obviously, you can do whatever you want with that. You can leave it how it is. Uh, we've also then got, uh, if we hit into a wall, then we destroy ourselves, just like everything else. So if we go off the map, then we go off the map. And that's it for that. We've got our zombie target movement, which has a human data holder. So we've also got a human data holder. We've got the holding the data for all the humans. So we check against humans to make sure we're going to attack them. And that is added to our path triggers object here. And that's just got the script of human data. And if I show you what that actually entails, it's literally exactly the same as the car data. So it's got humans equals list dot game object in the, in the angle brackets, open and close brackets, and then semicolon at the end to store a list of all the game objects. So when the uh, human target movement is created, 
So when a human is made, they also have a human data holder transform here. And that is set to the game object find path triggers. So basically this one stores it and then it adds itself to it by going human data add to list here. And then if we scroll down, we've just got the add to list function and that's got a variable list clear boolean equals false so this is just a temporary variable and then we've got a for variable of human which we've created which is an integer and then we're checking against all of those in the human data holder dot get component human data dot humans dot count so that's checking against all of the ones that are in this list then we add another human to that count on this for loop and then we go if human data holder dot get component human data humans human is equal to null so basically if there has been a human but it's been killed then we place ourselves in that list and then we add ourselves to that point in the list because there's an empty slot and then we break the for loop because we don't need to check that anymore and we also set list clear to true so if list clear isn't still isn't true after then so basically there wasn't any empty holes then we add ourselves to the end of the list of humans so the list of humans shouldn't ever be longer than the amount of humans that are in the scene or at least the amount of humans in the scene plus one because there'll be an empty slot sometimes. So back into our zombie target movement, we've got our zombie prefab. We've also got the zombie that is going to be following us that we create. We've got if we're walking, which is a boolean. We've got our movement speed, our target, which is a transform, which we set whenever we start following something. We've also got the hidden triggers, which is the same as the human ones. We've got our bit mask there of layer eight, and then we've got the hidden triggers there. One other thing just to make sure you do is add the zombie target to the hidden triggers as well, um, just to make sure that we're not going to be bumping into those things as well. After that, we've got our start function, which has a human data holder equals game object to find path triggers dot transform. So we make sure that we find the transform of the path triggers that we found. Um, so there's only going to be one in the scene because it's the parent of all of the path triggers. And then we set that one right at the start, and then we don't have to access it like that ever again. We go my zombie is equal to the zombie that we created, which is a prefab. So we go instantiate zombie transform position transform rotation. Then we've got my zombie get component zombie movement dot two follow equals transform. So it's exactly the same as how we do normally with the setting up a human or a car. Then we've got our movement speed is equal to a random range, which is actually slower than the humans, but can go up to a speed that can be higher than the humans. So sometimes they can be faster and sometimes they're not. We've got my zombie get component zombie movement is equal to that movement speed. And then we invoke a repeating of check humans. So we're checking against the humans that are around us. So we set off like a little beacon around us to try and find humans that are in our range. And then we've got an update of if we are walking. So if we're walking, we've got transform translate direct vector three forward. So we're moving forwards if we're moving. And if we also have a target, then we look at that target. So we're just going to be following them smooth, following them like that. But then because the zombie move, zombie is actually following this object, it's going to be nice smooth corners like they were with the cars and the humans as well. So we've got our check human function, which has if we have a target and our distance to that target is greater than three, then our target is equal to null. So if, we, if, they, if they go out of range, then we stop following them basically. Otherwise, if we don't have a target, we try and find the closest target. So it goes up to a distance of three. So closest target is a float of three. And then we go for humans that are inside human data holder dot get component human data dot humans. If the human doesn't equal null, so if there is a human there and our distance to that human is greater than closest target. So the closest target to start with is three. But obviously, if you've got a target that's closer than that, then it's going to be 2.8 or something or one and then if there's another human that's closer than that so if it's closer than that closest target then that's always going to be our target so we're always going for the closest one whether they're running in the direction that we want them to be or not it's to set up the kind of zombie ai that we're used to seeing where they kind of lunge at something that's close to them we've then got target equals human transform so the target equals the one that we we found so we start following them and then our closest target is equal to the distance to that object so that's how we know that that's going to be always the closest target that we want it to be. And then if target is equal to null, still after all of this, if the target is equal to null, we've got a random range of zero to five. So we've got a one in five chance to change our rotation to anywhere between zero and 360. So it can rotate to any angle around and it will just walk. Finally, if we on trigger enter into a building, so if we hit into a building object then we add ourselves to the building setup.zombies so I'll go over that in a second and we destroy ourselves and our 
our zombie that's attached to us. So we, if we if we bump into a building, then we go inside the building. So inside the building, we've got a zombie prefab, so it's it can spawn zombies. We've got the zombies integer, which is the current amount of zombies inside the building. So if I scroll down, we've got also inside the human exit later on, we go, if zombies is greater than zero, then it's got a random range between zero and one plus five divided by the number of zombies that are in the scene that are inside the building is equal to zero so if it's still equal to zero then our current humans is negatively equal to one and our current zombie is plus one so it creates a zombie inside the building without any real visuals but it's just numbers so it's saying that there was a zombie inside that building and it's killed a human that was inside that building and turned that into a zombie uh, as well as that there is a random range of zero to five so there's a one in five chance for the zombie to leave the building so that's going to instantiate a zombie at the doorway position and doorway rotation and the zombies are then going to be minus and equal to one so they'll just walk out and then it will change direction on its own and choose a human to attack so i think that's pretty much it for this part i don't think there's anything else i need to cover so the human the zombies just like walk around it's found that human. It's a bit slower than it, so it can't keep up, but it'll still ch keep chasing until a certain point, and then it'll go, hmm, I think I should be chasing something else or going somewhere else. So it decides to start chasing the other human, and that one's got away. It's only got every 0.5 seconds it, it can change its target, so like that one's just changed again. So some humans can run past them and not get caught. But sometimes the zombies are a bit smarter and they, s they snap onto them. So now that we've got some more zombies into the scene, they start running around and there's a chance for them to go into buildings, kill humans, and um, effectively create swarms and then probably get hit by cars at the end, to be honest. Um, so I hope that's been useful, guys. And if you've got any questions, do leave them in the comments down below. And I'll see you in the final tutorial in the next one, which will be just finishing setting up and getting the menus and stuff to work and being able to control the zombies as well. So I'll see you next time.